everybody, it's Nathan Freeberg from the Oregon Brew Running Series. I'm so excited to share with you my conversation with Danny and Jerry from Big Brothers Big Sisters Columbia Northwest. They are one of our nonprofit partners for, uh, well, last year, 2022, but also the 2023 uh, season of Beer Run Fun. They are going to be at our event on the 29th of April at Oakshire up in Northeast Portland, They're kind of doing a volunteer takeover. And so I had a chance to chat with them just to learn a little bit more about their program, about why they're doing it, their specific roles, some ways to get involved. And as you will hear, I have a little bit of a connection uh, from back when I was in high school. So enjoy this conversation and then join us at Oakshire Brewing on April 29th. Danny and Jerry, hello. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Pretty typical Oregon morning. So, you know, happy to see the sun a little bit. Danny, I'm going to start with you. Uh, just tell me a little bit, like in a brief, you know, a couple of sentences, like who you are and what your role is with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Very briefly, I, I went to the University of Florida, studied environmental studies, economics, and just always had some sort of involvement with nonprofits throughout my whole time in college. I then moved to Portland and came across the opportunity to work with Big Brothers Big Sisters, who I had known about for a long time and just really valued their mission. I started an enrollment where I helped bring on families and volunteers through our program. And then I got the chance to move on to development. So I've been here for about three-ish months, just helping with grant writing, social media, all the administrative stuff. And it's been amazing to just learn. Jerry, what about you? You've been involved uh, for a little bit longer, I think, right? In a couple of different roles? Yeah. So professionally, um, I started off a month before Danny joined the organization back in 2021. Um, I started off uh, in the same department as Danny did with the enrollment team. Um, and back then I was a community resource uh, resource specialist. So in other words, I was the first point of contact for any potential mentor, donor, or family that is inquiring about our services. Um, and then as time went on and I ended up wanting to showcase a little bit more of my skills, I ended up moving to the recruitment department and working as a recruitment and outreach specialist at this moment, working to increase the number of mentors that we have and ultimately match more kids with mentors. Very cool. Yeah. I, so my little connection is when I was in high school, my senior year of high school back in Michigan, it wasn't part of a formal Big Brothers, Big Sisters program, but guidance counselor came to me and said, you know, hey, there's this this kid in our community who essentially needs a, a, a big brother and would you be willing to do it? And so he and I got together once or twice a week and we played together. We went to some like high school sporting events together and it was, it was a really life-changing experience for me. So when Cynthia, who had come to us, I think two years ago now, said, hey, would you be interested in partnering with us? I was like immediately, yes, I think this is such a, such a needed thing. And so I'm wondering if one, um, one of you can maybe talk kind of high level, like what is Big Brothers Big Sisters and what are some of the goals of the program? Yeah, Big Brothers Big Sisters, our, um, our mission is to create and support one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationships that help ignite the promise and the potential of the youth. And our vision is that all youth achieve their full potential. Um, and here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, that looks like in the form of a mentor. And it is pretty basic. I like to say that mentorship is a very basic concept, very complex in the sense that anybody could be a mentor. Anybody could help a younger person. Anybody could help even somebody their age. Um, but it's complex in the sense that you don't know really in what areas of, um, of life it really kind of feeds into. Um, and sometimes uh, those benefits aren't seen until years down the road um, when the child is at graduation thanking their mentor for um, everything that they've done for them. So here at the organization, we pair um, kids uh, with mentors, with caring adult mentors who really have a sincere want to help the community. And here in the organization, that looks like about um, a year commitment. Um, and we asked our mentors to go out with their littles, whether it be low cost free activities or something really simple, like just walking around the park. Uh, we really push and value quality time and just being there for a, for a young person. That's a very important part that I, that I hear a lot from these kids and that all my colleagues here in the organization is that just having somebody there for them goes a long way. And right now we are uh, faced as an organization um, with wanting to increase our mentor pool. So here in the organization, we believe that anybody really can impact the child's life. It's the kids and the families who are requesting an individual that looks like them. Um, that actually does kind of fit the, the mold of a, of a big sibling. Um, so while we do believe that everybody has value to be a mentor, 
the kids and the families are requesting somebody that looks like them. So that's right now what we are working as an organization to increase matches, bring more mentors that look like the kids that we have in the organization. And I'm guessing uh, as you're working to, to add more mentors, it's because there's a tremendous need and there's a lot more mentees than there's mentors for, is that correct? Yeah, and, and it's more heightened now that we're coming out of the pandemic. Um, a lot of kids yeah. are requesting more help. Families are requesting more help due to the fact that those two years, three years kind of really did take a toll on everybody. Um, so yeah. right now we have a lot of families that are wanting that extra assistance. And although that's really um, great, it does um, we, do, we do have to find more mentors. Um, so that's kind of the goal and objective for us right now. How does that system work of pairing people up? Because I'm imagining someone who's like, I might have a little flexibility in my life to do something like that. What is the process of I'm assuming there's an application and like a matching and what is talk one of you talk a little bit about that because I think that's maybe one of the first questions folks might have. So the first step you would just come on our website sign up for an orientation where you can learn about our program and what's expected of you. It's a, about an hour long and it's pretty great. It's held by one of our team members and you get to meet other prospective bigs and just talk about your experiences. Then you'd go through an interview process which can be about one hour to two hours where you just talk about your intentions, some of your background, see kind of like the type of person you are. Because like you mentioned, when we match you with a little, a little, it is very intentional. And we do hope that you either can look like them or at least be able to meet them where they're at, share some interests, um, just make sure that that partnership can really be something you both grow from. And then you mentioned a year-long commitment. Do a lot of these relationships only last for a year? Because I, I would imagine that would be a difficult barrier for someone to like, well, I'm committing to like intentionally invest in this child's life. Like, what, what does that look like? I imagine that like once that connection is made, people are like, yeah, I'll keep going for two, three, or, you know, until this, this child is graduated from high school, like you mentioned. Here in Columbia Northwest, our um, average length is about four years meaning that we do only ask for mentors for one year, but they want to continue this relationship um, for years and years. And um, I do have a personal experience with that as well. Um, when I was younger, when I was seven years old, about like 17 years ago, um, I first was put into the Big Brothers Big Sisters program as a mentee. Um, so I was a child who was facing a lot of things at home, a single mother, an incarcerated parent. Really, I was hitting all those check marks. And um, my mother need, knew that I needed somebody in my life to look up to, a mentor. And in a very short you know, story, we ended up being matched for 11 years. So from when I was seven, all the way till I graduated out of the program at 18. Um, and to be honest, to this day, we still talk a lot. Um, he still helps me navigate my own professional life, my career life, um, heck, even dating. Uh, you know, all those things, he, he still plays that big brother part. Um, so I like to say that in the organization, we only lasted 11 years, but as of right now, we've been in this mentor, little brother, big brother relationship for about 17 years now. That's really cool. How, um, this is gonna be a difficult question, uh, Jerry, but how do you, well, I'm gonna ask it, kind of ask you to answer it two ways. So as a, as a former little, and then now as someone working for the organization, how do you measure like a successful matching or pairing? To be honest, as a, as a little, the expectations are a little different and the metrics as well. Um, sometimes metrics don't always uh, correlate exactly with uh, what they're showing, but we hear a lot from these mentors. Um, and some of the most impactful moments as a, as a little myself, um, I've attended three graduations in my life for Big Brothers Big Sisters, one for my own graduation when I graduated the program and two as a staff member. And I will say that cool. um, a lot of these impacts and benefits that the mentee receives, they don't really come out until graduation when they're at the podium and they have a few minutes to tell about their experience. And I will say the majority of the kids that walk across there talk about how much their mentor has impacted them and the benefits of how they were helped by their, um, by their advice. Um, I like to tell a lot of mentors that here in Big Brothers Big Sisters, the impact isn't always so noticeable. You won't, um, might, you might not see your um, advice being put into play in that moment, but 10 years from now, you know, I could bet that that little probably will pull out from the bank, you know, the words that you said, you know, in those moments. So as a little, like it's, yeah. it's pretty cool to see both sides, both me having a mentor, but now also 
having that goal of increasing the pool of mentors. I'm wondering if you, either of you, can share some stories to maybe pull on some heartstrings of either, you know, what what do people share at these graduations? Like, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know, when so-and-so is taking me to the park once a week, like all that was happening or stories you've heard reporter reported and even like from both the big and the little side of it, because as I've done it myself and have had a couple other friends do it, one, one friend is, is still doing it kind of that 11 plus year relationship that you were mentioning. They're like, I feel like I'm getting more out of this than the little. And so I'm wondering if you have any like specific stories that you could share to kind of communicate some of the benefits, not only for the little, but also for the big in this program. Personally, uh, one of the best moments that I like to tell a lot of our prospective mentors is a lot of them come in thinking, you know, they won't have to do this big level, high level picture of like what a mentor is. Like sitting down, figuring out, um, you know, graduation plans or post-secondary plans. Like it really is sometimes I like to tell mentors a lot simpler than that. For me, in my case, when I was growing up, I was, you know, raised by a single mother my whole life. So an escape for me was video games when I was growing up in middle school. And at the moment, I didn't know, but my big brother would always come and spend time with me while I played video games. Keep in mind, these were single player games. So he would just yeah. sit next to me and watch you. me play. Um, but he knew, you know, as I as I found out down the road, that was a moment where he really had an opportunity to talk. To me. That was my escape from reality where my mind was just mm-hmm. flowing. Uh, ideas, concepts, just conversations were going. And he found that as an opportunity to kind of really pick my brain apart and really figure out all these things. And that's one of the things I tell people in this organization. I tell families, I tell mentors that it's really those little small moments that add up and make a big impact. If it wasn't for my mentor uh, spending time with me, you know, while while I was playing video games, I don't think I would have ever opened up to him about anything in my life just because I was afraid and just because I wasn't in my in my comfort zone. So those are one of those kind of instances where I like to tell everybody that, hey, all it takes is just a moment, just showing up for a kid, just letting them know like, hey, I'm there if you need something, you can always count on me. And sometimes, you know, growing up, that's really what a lot of kids just need. Half the battle is just consistently showing up, like you said, and being present. Those moments, like you're saying, like when you're playing video games for that person to be present with you and not like on their own phone or not like just, all right, I'll just sit here and wait until he's done. That's not a grand, giant, like all that difficult of a thing is just to kind of sit and be present with someone. Is that something that you train the mentors with, try to drill down on them is like, you know, kind of doesn't matter what you do. You just got to be fully present for them. Yeah, that's definitely something we we push a lot to these mentors is just showing up um, and consistency is a lot of these kids. They will pick up pretty fast if a mentor is there for them or if they're just there as a fulfillment. So we kind of tell our mentors that, you know, we have found that low cost free activities, just spending time together with the mentee uh, goes a long way. And, you know, at graduation, when these kids come up and they talk about how their mentor impacted them, a majority of the times it's these little small moments that accumulate over time that really, you know, make this huge impact. And I would say that it's not one single event that I hear that is the most impactful one. It's always just little small ones, and then they all kind of add up towards the end, and they ultimately shape a child's perspective. And, and their life, too. As mentors, when you become a big, you have access to a match support specialist who's a staff member who's with you throughout the duration of your mat and advises you if you ever come across any obstacles. And as I'm sure you know, teenagers can be a little complicated sometimes. So a lot no. of times, bigs will come to their match support and say like, hey, my little is not really talking to me, or they're just on their phone. Like, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? Yeah. And that match support will give them advice and say, like, oh, you just, just have to be there. Like you mentioned, even if they're playing video games, like just sitting there, letting them be themselves really does go a long way. How, that kind of leads into my next question is because one of the things I'm hoping to do in this is, yes, recruit more, you know, people to mentor to be part of this amazing program, but also to help them understand kind of all the support and resources available. So, you know, what you're saying, Danny, is like, let's say there's like, like, I don't think this is working. Something's going wrong. Is there a process of counseling and helping and really being a support system for that, for that big in that process? Or is it really hands off and kind of figured out? It's as hands on as you want it to be. Like I mentioned, we have that match support who checks in periodically. So it is 
you at least get one contact every two weeks. Okay, I oh, believe, wow. or once, or once a month, that's pretty, that's once a match. Is, I think it grows to be once yeah. a month, once once a match is longer. But um, yeah, that match report is purely there just for advice and like for you to talk to, to them about whatever's going on and just to check up, make sure things are good. And we also try to encourage for bigs. We occasionally have community events. We have like events called Bigs Night Out, where you'll have bigs come together mm. and kind of share that experience of being a big and and what that's like because it's pretty unique and you don't really yeah. get to have that unless you are a big. Another plug for our event. So <laughs> April 29th. There you go. We have for the bigs and the littles, the littles, so kids 12 and under are always free. But we have, um, it's either free or buy one, get one for the bigs as well. And uh, as I mentioned, this April 29th event, Big Brothers Big Sisters is doing kind of a volunteer takeover, but that those deals apply for all of our events this season. I think we have something like 16 or 18 left. So um, anyone listening to this, if you're looking for you know a fun way to, to be active and have fun with your little, there'll be some I don't know, links or notes somewhere. Somewhere in there, you can kind of sign up to get more information about that. I wonder if we can talk a little bit about how to get involved. I know that you mentioned early on that there's like like a form. Maybe list kind of all the different ways that you can get involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Obviously, there's the the mentorship relationship, which is the number one thing. But what are some other ways to show support? However, that might look. So here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, we also love a lot of community partners. Um, so another way that we also like uh, the community to get involved is a lot of the kids in the organization, they're asking for a, um, a lot of help, resources in the forms of workshops. Uh, so it's something that we also ask uh, any potential businesses, like if they teach financial literacy or if they have any resume workshop classes. Um, those are things that resources that we then pass on to the kids. Uh, that the, then the kids kind of take advantage of uh, because a lot of them are wanting to get this extra prep for post-secondary uh, life. And a lot of them attend yeah. our workshops, whether it be financial literacy that is put on by some of our partners on the board or even down to credit cards, like how to manage credit cards. Because mm. a lot of the kids in the organization, um, they're sometimes first gen and they have to navigate these kind of waters by themselves and with their mentor, and they just really want a lot of uh, help. And so we'd like to tell people if they are able to put up a workshop or if they're able to give their time and teach kids, uh, maybe at one session a month, maybe they don't have the time to commit mm -hmm. for a year, um, but if they're able to put up a workshop um, or to kind of provide any services for our matches, uh, that's also one way we really um, would like a lot of people to uh, come and partner with us if possible. Anything else you'd add to that, Danny? Don't talk about money at all? Yeah, um, it's always a, a bit of a harder one, but yeah, there's yeah. A, there are links to where you could come on to and, and donate, you know, even $5 a month goes a long way. Um, anything can help. And if you can't physically donate money or time, you can always tell your friends. Um, if you know you have a friend who would be a great big and they have a little more time in their life, then just spread the word. And there's there's so many ways you can help out. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you feel like I should ask or like a story that you want to tell or something that would really capture kind of the heart of the work or? I guess I would just like to kind of just make the plea to become a mentor. Uh, a lot of the a lot of these times, you know, when we are faced with you know an, an opportunity, we sometimes might have a misconception of what it really entails. And here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, it's just a one year commitment. We ask the mentors meet with their little two to four times a month for anywhere for an hour to two hours. And it seems like a really simple ask, uh, but it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And the impact is something that may not be noticeable in the moment itself, um, but it could be noticeable down the road when, you know, the little is maybe thinking they're big for X, Y, and Z that they did for the last 10 years. You don't really know the impact you can have on a child until you start and you really take that leap to ignite another child's potential. And I will say um, it is something beautiful as a little to have somebody in your corner that you can rely on. I will say that with having my mentor for about 11 years, I navigated elementary, middle school, high school, and everything that comes with that. All those, you know, middle school dramas, high school dramas, my mentor was there. And he never played a parent role or nothing. He played the role of a big brother, which was to support me, to encourage me, and to really cultivate my dreams and any aspirations that I have. And that's something that I know that our mentors in this organization, they do for our kids. And it's just a beautiful thing to work in an organization that really wants to proactively help these kids rather than reactively. People generally think 
you come on as a mentor to like teach a child and like mm. do all this this one like one-sided mentorship but it really does go both ways when i was in enrollment and i would talk to a lot of previous mentors they would say how connecting with a child kind of reignited their their imagination their playfulness their creativity just approaching the world with curiosity in a way that you kind of lose as an adult or so they've said and it's just really really special for them that's beautiful that's very very well said any final thoughts to Jerry or Danny as we as we wrap this up and get ready for the event? We just look forward to having any and everybody out there to help push our mission, uh, help increase the number of mentors that we have, and ultimately help the kids in the organization and our local community have that person in their corner that they can rely on and, and have a support. We're always uh, willing to take mentors in. Our process is pretty simple. There's a couple steps, but you know, that's to show the determination and wanting to be a mentor. And overall, we are excited to see any potential familiar faces, new faces come on board and to help push our mission, which is to ignite the potential and the promise of our local community. We'll be there April 29th at Oakshire. Do you want to come yeah. say hi? Well, thanks so much, uh, both of you. I appreciate it. Um, and like I said, I, I just I think so highly of what your organization is doing. I think sometimes kids can kind of get lost uh, and especially, you know, Jerry, as you shared a little bit about your story, you know, single, single parent household and just how sometimes those kids can get lost. And then too often, I think we see, you know, without any sort of mentorship or guidance, they kind of go maybe in a direction that that isn't so great and they don't end up, uh, you know, kind of as, as you are. So um, I would encourage anybody listening or watching this right now, just, you know, highly consider it. And, you know, we're all busy. Everybody's busy but this can really have a profound effect um, not only on the little's life, but on your life as well. So uh, thanks again, both of you. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to chat. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much, Nathan.